and sunset, promise and fulfillment, birth and death. The whole drama of life is written in the sands of time. We present a new series of radio programs, The Clock. Changeling as frisky as a colt and very fond of parlor tricks. Its collaborator in practical skullduggery is the air age, which has reduced the shortest distance between two points to an even shorter distance. Here's time is a practical joker, but so is nature. The old lady has a way of pulling rabbits out of a hat that sometimes makes the very stars in the heavens rock with laughter and occasionally turns the heart of mortal man to liquid ice. You sent for me, Mr. Waynard? Oh, yes, Profi. Uh, sit down. <sighs> Cigar? Oh, thanks, Mr. Wainwright. And how long have you been a detective, Sergeant Brophy? Ten years, I guess. Mm-hmm. Ten years. And another ten years from now, you'll be a lieutenant. And that's about as far as you'll go. Well, you can't expect much more in a town this size. It's not a very big place, you know. Mm, it's big enough for a man with ambition. Take me, for instance. I've been prosecuting attorney now for just six months. But within the next six months, I hope to be mayor. Well, you've got a good record, Mr. Waynard. 98% of the cases you've tried end up in convictions. 100% <laughs> Brophy. So far, I haven't missed. And I don't intend to either. Which uh, brings me to the Lawrence case. Well, I guess that's one case you'll never get a chance to prosecute, Mr. Waynard. Why not? Because we haven't solved it. But that's ridiculous. A young girl is stabbed to death after being brutally beaten and robbed, and you say it can't be solved. Do you realize how the people in this town feel about their crime? Mm, I know. They're frightened, worried, fearful for their loved ones. They're waiting for an arrest, Brophy, and a conviction. Well, what can we do, Mr. Waynard? We haven't got a shred of evidence to work on. Brophy, Anne Lawrence's murder was one of the most publicized crimes in the county in years. And the man who puts a rope around the neck of her killer will be a hero. It would be a feather in your cap, I know. I wish I could make the pinch. A feather in my cap? Why, do you realize it would ensure me the election? Well, I still say we've got nothing to work then on. Then find something to work on. Dig a little deeper. Bring in a suspect. I guarantee if you bring him in, I'll see him hanged. There'd be uh, no question, Brophy, about my career once that happened. Mm, I, I guess not. And no question about yours, either. How would you like to be... Uh, Commissioner of Police. Yeah, we don't have a commissioner now, Mr. Waynard. The chief's our top rank. The chief is a buttonhead. That's why I'm talking to you. And as far as the office is concerned, I'll create a commissioner of police after I'm elected. Well, that sounds good, but... Oh, just a moment, Wayne. Oh, Waynard speaking. Oh, yes, just a second. Uh, one of your men, Brophy. Thanks. Yeah? Uh-huh. When? And where'd you pick him up? Blood on his clothes. What's up? We just picked up a tramp near the railway yard. They found blood on his coat. We'll be over in 15 minutes. Be right over, Dunningham. What a break. I've been waiting for this. Yeah, but this guy may not have had anything to do with the Lawrence case. That's the kind of negative thinking that gets you nowhere, Brophy. It might be wiser if we both proceeded on the theory that he did. I just got into town, Mr. Wayne. Where are you from? Carson City. Your family there? I... I don't have any family. What are you doing here? Uh, I don't know. I thought maybe I could get a job. What about those bloodstains on your clothes? Why do you keep hounding me this way? I'm not a criminal. Answer Mr. Waynard's question. Where did you get those bloodstains? All right. I'll... I'll tell you. I, uh... I stole a chicken in the next town. I was hungry. I hadn't eaten for days. I stole a chicken and killed it myself. I... I guess that lets me in for a petty larceny charge. But, but honest, I intended to send the farmer his money as soon as I got back on my feet. A chicken? <laughs> you hear that, Brophy? He killed a chicken. Yeah, I heard. But, but it's the truth. I'm telling you the truth. Can you prove you only just got into town? Well, no. How did you get here? Hitchhiking? Well, I hopped the freight. I rode the route. Too bad you don't have any witnesses to prove you were somewhere else two days ago. Why? 
because that's when Ann Lawrence was robbed and killed. And I'm holding you for the murder, Claney. My witness said he saw a man running away about two blocks from where the body was found. But it wasn't me, Mr. Weiner. No. He saw him from behind, about 5'11", brown suit, narrow shoulders. Well, that could fit almost anybody. Including you? Nah. Yes. And it fits you, Claney, like a glove. And so, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the evidence speaks for itself. <laughs> My distinguished opponent, the attorney for the defense, has tried to prove that the evidence was all purely circumstantial. Well, why not? Whoever said a guilty verdict could not be handed down on circumstantial evidence alone, providing it was a strong one. The safety of our wives and daughters may depend upon your verdict. If this man is set free, it will be a green light for every foul and ruthless beast who happens to wander in our jurisdiction. I ask of you, I beg of you, to consider this very carefully and return a verdict of guilty in the first degree. You want to see me, Claney? They're going to hang me, Mr. Winger. You asked for it. They're going to hang me because... because you're such a brilliant attorney. <laughs> you flatter me. You know the evidence against me was weak, but you were clever enough to make it appear to be strong. You had a trial by jury. Are you suggesting that you were framed? did you have against me? Why did you hate me so much you had to do this to me? If you've got nothing more than that to tell me, Claney, I'm afraid I have to leave. I'm making a train for Chicago in half an hour, and I don't have much time. I guess you'll be back for my execution. It won't make any difference to you. I'd like you to be there, Mr. Wainwright. I'd like to be looking into your eyes when I die, so... Well, I'll try to give you that satisfaction. Uh, you're a cool one, aren't you? Mark Wainer, the man who never lost a case. Mark Wainer, the people's choice. All right, if it'll make you feel any better, call me names. Go on, swear at me. They all do it sooner or later. I won't hold it against you. No. No, I'm not going to call you any names, Mr. Wainer. But, but if I had just one wish before I died, it would be this. One day I want you to feel the way I've been feeling. One day I'd like you to know what it means to be an innocent man. Hounded, beaten, and accused of being a murderer. When you've been through that, Mr. Wainwright, you'll know what I've been through. And heaven help you. Oh, Brophy. Oh, hello, Mr. Wainwright. Mind, mind if I sit down? No, not at all. Uh, well, what are you doing aboard this train? I'm going to Newfield. Order a new scaffold. Oh. I'll have it in plenty of time for the hanging. <laughs> You're due for a promotion, Brophy. Am I? Yes, you'll be given a lieutenant's rating. Now, talk it over with Mayor Libby. And after the next election, Brophy, you may be in for something even bigger. Yeah, I'd uh, just as soon not have a promotion, Mr. Wainard. Why not? Well, I don't think I deserve one. But you're getting it on the strength of the Lawrence case. Hmm. Yeah, that's, uh, that's just what I mean. What are you driving at? Nothing, Mr. Wayne. Forget it. Mind if I look at your paper? No. Oh. Go ahead. Yeah, funny. What is? Did you read this, uh, this about this guy Beach? He's on the front page again. Oh, they, they caught him? No, not yet. Let's see, he, uh, he escaped from prison almost a week ago, didn't he? Yeah, two days before they were going to give him the chair. Uh -huh. He's just about the most dangerous animal alive right now. He's armed with a gun, and no cop is going to take him without a fight. Where do they think he was headed for? Chicago. Police have been alerted all along the line. They've got orders to shoot on sight. Yeah, the cops aren't the only ones who will kill him on sight. The gangsters are laying for him, too. Yeah, this guy doesn't have a friend in the world. Reminds me a little of uh, Hank Cleaney. I don't like the way you seem to sympathize with that killer, Brophy. Sorry. He was tried and convicted. Now, let's forget about it, huh? Sure. Have you seen uh, Beach's picture? No, uh, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> He's 
fat, isn't he? Just his face. The rest of him is built like a whip. He's got your build, Mr. Waynard. <laughs> well, I keep myself in good condition. At least I, I was in good condition before that trial started. Somehow it took a lot out of me. I didn't want to say so, but <clears throat> I, I noticed you've been looking poorly. Huh? Yeah, your eyes are kind of puffy, and so is your face. Really? Oh. Oh, here, move over. Okay. I want to look in that mirror between the seats. Oh, it's funny. I had noticed it before. My face looks uh, swollen. Maybe you ought to see a doctor. Yeah, I, I think I will when I get to Chicago. Uh, can you recommend anyone? Uh, I don't know a soul in that town, Mr. Winnon. No, neither do I. You're going there to attend a legal convention, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, I could see Dr. Cartwright when I get back home. Yeah, but I won't wait. I'll, I'll consult a physician in Chicago. Well, there's probably nothing to worry about. <laughs> no, no I, I guess not, but... Well, uh, what are you staring at me like that for? Take another look at this picture of Beach. Here in the paper. Huh? Well, what about it? What are you talking about, Brophy? Well, maybe I'm wrong, but with your face all swollen that way... <laughs> you, uh, You look just like him. Nothing to get excited about, Mr. Waynard. <laughs> look at my face. It's, it's puffed up like a balloon. I, I don't look like myself at all. It's just an allergy. You're probably allergic to uh, wholesome food, perhaps. An allergy? Is that, is that all it is? Yes, it looks bad, but it's oh. nothing serious. It should disappear in, uh, oh, about a week or ten days. Uh-huh. Where are you living while you're in Chicago, Mr. Waynard? Oh, I, I've got a room at the Hotel Standard, but I haven't checked in yet. I left my suitcase across the street in the station and came here directly. I'm... I'm rather worried, worry, naturally. Well, I suggest you consult your own physician when you get home. Uh-huh. He may be able to prevent a recurrence. Yes, well, uh, thanks a lot, Dr. Payne. Uh, will this uh, cover the fee? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, it's odd, but you seem to remind me of someone. Do I? Yes, someone I've seen very recently. Uh, a friend, Dr. Payne? No. Oh, wait a minute, I just remembered. Uh, what did I do with that newspaper? Uh, there's a paper on the chair. Oh, yes, that's the one... There was a picture in here of someone this morning who... Who... What, Dr. Payne? Why, it's amazing. This man Beach, the killer they're looking for. Oh, I, I don't mean any offense by this, Mr. Wayne. Well, but if I didn't know about your present condition, I'd swear this picture was yours. <laughs> Taxi, mister? Uh, well, uh, yes, I, I was waiting for a cab, but I... Uh... Hop in. I'm an independent. You're... Quick, hop in. We're holding up traffic. I'm going to the Hotel Standard. Nowhere, it is. No. Do you? Sure. Young lady, are you sure you operate a legitimate taxi cab? Where's your meter? Cut the comedy. You sure got nerve. The very cop in the country waiting to pot you like a rabbit you pick on a hot town like Chicago to hold up in. What are you talking about? No, you don't have to put on an act for me. I'm not turning you over to any dick. Oh, wait a minute. I, I think you're getting me mixed up with someone else. All right. Have it your own way. Maybe you don't appreciate what I'm doing. Joey Proctor saw you come out of the station and cross the street to that office building. He called me and I picked you up. Just who do you think I am? Either Santa Claus or Charlie Beach. And Santa's got a long white beard, honey. Beach? That was quite a break you made. I understand you killed two guards on your way out of jail. Oh, look, I'm not Charlie Beach. I, I suggest you let me off the next corner. What? You heard me. My, my name's Raynard, and I, I happen to be an attorney. My name's Lady Godiva, only I lost my heart. Don't be funny and stop this car. You've been away too long, Charlie. If you don't know, the cops have set you up like a pigeon. Every cop in town knows you by sight. And this time, they're going to shoot first and ask the questions later. Let me out of this car, you fool. Suit yourself. See that cop on the corner? Yeah. What about him? If you start walking in his direction, you might change your mind. 
Well, what are you waiting for, a big shot? Oh, it's, it's ridiculous. I, I'll just go up to him and explain, that's all. Sure, go ahead. Where's my uh, suitcase? Hey, you! What? He's seen us. Close that door. He's shooting at us. Well, Charlie, do you want me to drop you off at the next convenient corner? No. I'll stay in the car. With you. Even time moves fast when the bullets are flying, as Mark Waynard is discovering right this minute. Cigarette, Charlie? No. And I wish you'd stop calling me Charlie. I, I tell you, you've got the wrong man. The cop would have been surprised to hear it. Look, I, I have an identification in my wallet. There you are, see? My name's Waynard. There it is on the card. Where'd you steal the wallet from? Isn't it possible for me to identify myself? Can't I... Go into a police precinct and give myself up, and then... Uh, Every day isn't a chump, Charlie. The cops only fall once for a gag like that. Remember the last time some cop challenged you and you started to give yourself up? The last time? You let him get within shooting distance, and you blew his head off. Now, that ain't cricket, Charlie. And the dicks are a little peeved. You couldn't get near a cop anymore and live to talk about it. Well, if that's the spot I'm in, why are you taking such chances? Because I like you, Charlie. You're a right guy. You see, I... I got a sort of a personal interest. We got mutual friends. Have we? What am I going to do? If you want to leave Chicago, Charlie, you might be able to make it by riding the rugs. You mean in a freight car? It's your only chance. I know a spot near the outskirts of the city where the freights make a stop. Then take me there. We're on our way, baby. But first, we're going to pay a little visit to one of our mutual friends. you, Charlie. Oh, where are we? The freight stop is just below the hill. We'll walk over this way. Through this cemetery? That's where this friend of ours lives. Look, I, I, I've changed my mind. There, there must be another way. I, maybe I can reach that doctor who examined me. I haven't changed my mind, Charlie. What are you doing with that gun? Get moving, mister. Who are you, anyway? Keep walking. What's your name? Dolly. The last name, Charlie, is Cow. Cow? Remember Harry Cow? No. You're just getting absent-minded. Well, this is far enough, Charlie. Turn around and look at the stone behind you. You can read, can't you? Harry Cow, it says, born July 8, 1909. Died March the 12th, 1945. The only thing it doesn't say is how he died. Are you his wife? I was, for three months. And you decided to make me a widow, Charlie. And now you know why I've been saving you from the cops, baby. I wanted to have the pleasure of killing you myself. What are you going to do? Give you a taste of what Harry got. Only you're getting a break. You shot him in the back, Charlie. I'm giving you a chance to see what's coming. I, I, I tell you, I, I'm not Charlie Beach. I didn't kill your husband. Can't you believe me? Crawl on, crawl. I like to watch you. Look, do you know what circumstantial evidence is? It's something you can't take for granted. You need more proof. I only look like bitch to you, but I'm someone else. You can't kill me because you've mistaken me for someone else. I made no mistake. So long, Charlie. I might give Harry my love. Can you see him? <laughs> it's bitch! <laughs> Just a girl. Snap out of it. I've been sleeping like a stiff for the last four hours. Why is it's the dark? What are you expecting a freight car? Chandeliers? What kind of a rap are they after you for? Huh. I haven't done anything. <laughs> Don't hand me that. When you climbed aboard this cat old car outside of Chicago, there must have been 20 cops on your tail. Yeah. They're after me. I, I know. It's 
been that way for days. Hiding in cellars. Afraid to show my face. Running. Like an animal. You must be plenty hot, sweetheart. A little too hot for me. I'm getting ready, you see. You're leaving this freight car the next time it starts. No. No, please. They'll kill me. That's just too bad, sweetheart. But I ain't taking a rap for you. No. I guess it doesn't matter anymore. Maybe this is the way it's supposed to be. What are you talking about? I can't escape it. I'm too tired to try again. There. Slow down. Okay, on your feet, sweetheart. Uh, I can't see it. It's the dark. Okay, mister. When I slide this door back, start running. Aren't you okay? Brophy, the Larens case. Plain him maybe may innocent. We, we've got to give him another trial. Well, you got my wire, didn't you? The wire? Yeah. And Larence's boyfriend confessed to the murder while you were gone. Oh, good. Good, I, I, I'm glad. I, you don't know what I've been through. You, you, you don't... Brophy. Yeah? You, you recognize me? Yeah, I recognized you. I've been working with you long enough, Mr. Wainer. My, 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 my face, is it back to normal? Oh, it looks all right to me. But how did you get into this freight car, Mr. Wainer? We got a wire from Chicago to stop it here. <laughs> I, I know they thought I was someone else. They, they wanted to kill me on sight. But... Brophy, the man you shot, the man I was riding with in, the, in that car. Who was he? The escaped convict. Charlie Beach. And that's the story of Mark Waynard as recorded on the clock. Coincidence? Well, perhaps, but an uncle of mine can testify to the veracity of that story. He occupies a prominent position on the courthouse wall of a small Midwestern town. And he's often watched a brilliant young lawyer plead his cases. But Mark Waynard isn't prosecuting attorney anymore. He's now counsel for the defense. The clock will be heard again next week, same time. This program was written by Lawrence Clee and starred Hart McGuire as the voice of the clock. As Mark Waynard, you heard John Bushell as Brophy Ken Wayne. Others were Al Garcia, Len Teal, Margaret Christensen and Owen Weingott. The clock, directed by John Saul, is a Grace Gibson radio production.